Hello, hello, good day, good day. How is everyone doing? I believe we're live. Please let me know if you can uh, see me and hear me in the chat here. Um, I've just made something work for this stream, so I apologize it's not flash by any means or seeing here, wonderful, good to hear. Hello, welcome. I, um, I decided to go a little bit earlier, so I got up at 3.30 a.m. my time to set up for this stream. So I've currently got the trailer sitting in a, um, uh, a car park for a, a local venue at the moment. So I wasn't able to kind of pre-set up yesterday because it's out in the open. So I had to roll in this morning, pull everything out, put some cameras in, get, all, uh, get everything going. But we are here at the moment. And uh, TBJ, that's a great question. Will be the full tour video? There will be a video going live. I'm going to film this afternoon. Um, much prettier. I'm going to get you know nice cameras out. We're going to do it much nicer. But this will be the video that will be a lot more in depth. The video later on will show you know the, the high level stuff, all the pretty things, all the montages and such. But this one, I'm going to dive deep into all the all the fun stuff. So. Stick around. This is going to be this is going to be a fun one. And um, please light up the chat as you go as well, because I'd love to see your thoughts. Now, my setup here at the moment, I've got a camera going into the system, so we actually are streaming from the system itself. Uh, I've got a mic on going into the console, going into the constellation. Uh, I'm streaming from my Pearl Nano at the moment, but we are basically this is the first ever live stream from this trailer, which is quite exciting. It's a, we have done a job before, but it wasn't live stream, but this is the first live stream, which is great. Which is cool. It's actually working. So, um, so let me give you a top-level overview of this trailer. The question I get a lot is, what is this trailer? Who's it for? So, this is a uh, OB trailer for a client. So, this is actually this is not mine. Um, I have done the full design and fit out for it, but this is essentially for a client, and this is their trailer. So, this has been delivered to them tomorrow. Um, so this is the last day I have to kind of clean things up, test everything. So we've been going through testing all the patch points and everything. Um, so this morning when it's a reasonable time, because right now it's 6.19 a.m., we will go through and um, figure out, yeah, we'll go through, test everything, make sure it all works so that I can hand over to the client and be like, here is your working trailer. Um, now, what is the first gig for this trailer? So. I know in my previous videos I was saying that, oh yeah, no, this will be it. This will be on a gig next week and all this kind of stuff. Now, it did go on a gig. The, uh, the client wanted it for a um, gig pretty quickly, but we didn't actually have time to stress test everything. Now, I went through as I was assembling it, you know, testing cables to plugging things in, things were working, but I never actually went through and did a stress test just because we ran out of time. So when we got up there for this job in Brisbane, I was hoping to, you know, kind of roll in, fire it all up, do a bunch of video, release this awesome video, being like, hey, check out our first gig in the trailer. But all hell broke loose. The network completely um, died, basically. Uh, now, looking back at it, it was a, um, looks like a multicast storm going through. So because we had a mixture of Dante, um, Gringo comms, and the KVMs, which are all Matrix, which is all in the network, the uh, KVM and the comms were fighting against each other. So I had the KVM going and I had the comms going separately, but when I put them together, it all absolutely froze. So the network basically froze. I was having like some control, but like the audio console was freezing. I couldn't get connected to the Green Ghost. So I spent the whole day trying to get at least the comms going because if you haven't got comms, you can't talk to anyone. So that was the first gig. It was, uh, look, it was stressful to say the least. I got the system working at a functional point literally five minutes before we were live like it was a live show so the band were pretty much coming up on stage as we got it working so that was a little bit stressful to say the least but we are uh, we got the job done so now we've got the trailer back and we are able to do a full functional test and, and you know this is one of them as well so we've got the network reconfigured we've separated the vlans for the kvm and the um control network which includes the comms and now everything is a lot happier also had snooping turned on as well, which we thought was turned on, but it wasn't at the time anyway. That was that. So there's another gig this is going to in, what day is it today? Uh, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in two days time. So that's what the, so we're delivering it to the client so they can bump in tomorrow for the job. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, I'm not on that job, but yeah, hopefully all will go well there. So 
let me give you a top little overview of the parts of this trailer. So, most of the gear is based on a Blackmagic um, switcher. So, we've got an ATEM Constellation 8K, which is the brains of all things video. We have two 40x40 routers. Now, the other thing too is that this trailer is rated for 6G, so up to 30 frames in 4K. Not 12G, because a lot of the gigs that the client does is all in 25 or 30. Um, and also 12G just added a huge amount of cost to make that compatible. So 6G router trailer, so everything in here will run 6G, no problem. Uh, good morning, Crazy Caleb from Melbourne, Australia. It's nice and early down there as well. Um, so 6G trailer, we have a Gringo intercom system. So full matrix intercom over IP, which I absolutely love. Uh, I just went through yesterday and did a firmware update and everything to make, make it all up to date. Uh, we have a DLive DM0 as our audio console, and we have a Dante card and a Maddie card in there, which is uh, running all things audio. Um, the stage boxes of uh, Dante, so the DT168 for the, um, uh, for the audio stage boxes. We've also got a, I'll, I'll show you once we're, once we get, once we're in the rack. Um, so we got that. What else is there? Uh, we have a LiveU 610 4K, M4K. That's the primary streaming encoder that's going to be used in here. Um, the network switches are HP Enterprise um, switches. So we have a primary and backup, primary and secondary network system. So we have, um, especially for things like Dante, which have a primary and secondary system, we have a full dual network of primary going um, primary network and backup network. So from the trailer, we have two switches in there. We have the core switch, which does all the DHCP management, and the backup switch above that, which does um, all things backup. And then from those, they go fiber to stage box A and stage box B as well. So we have two independent networks um, in case anything happens to that. And also we have, um, they are trunked together so that if a switch fails, we can pull the um, ports over to the next switch and we can keep the show going. So full redundant network, um, now that it's actually set up correctly, so that is a very handy thing. Um, but I think that's it. So I apologize in advance, so I'm just gonna walk around with the phone. I will uh, clean the lens though, I'll at least do that. Um, but I am seeing that on the multi-view, which is good. So I'm gonna wander around and show you this trailer. If you, um, I'm gonna lose the chat uh, for a little bit, but I'll keep peeking in here to have a look and see what people are saying. Um, but I'll give you a full rundown of the system and what we've got. So let's have a look. We've cut to 15 and I believe we are live on the iPhone. So let me wander around. I've just got the camera here set up at the moment. So here is the, I can see levels in there so you can still hear me. So I've got lab on, which is good. So here is the main control room. So we've kind of set this up into four different positions. It's a little bit tight to have four, but it is doable. So we have our TD switcher over here. We can have like a director's assist or a director on the side. Um, so we've got the two Amiga Advance panel sitting here in all its glory, stuck into the desk, which is awesome. Using a bunch of BenQ monitors. So these are 4K monitors and the multi-views are running in 4K, which is a crucial, uh, in my opinion, because so for example, this program is full HD. So you get to see pixel for pixel what is going on if you're doing a HD stream and you know you can at least see your um, focus, all that kind of stuff, it's really good. Now each position has a bunch of uh, patch points. Um, now at the back here, we've got a whole bunch of patch points. So it means that wherever you're sitting, so I've got my laptop here for example, I've just patched into a patch point and that is going to the back, which we can patch into wherever we need. So we can grab whatever VLAN we want. But yeah, tie lines everywhere. It was super handy. Apologize for the mess. Like we are literally just trying to clean this up at the moment. Um, but I just wanted to get live and get going with all of you. Um, walk about. Eric, yep, that's absolutely what we're doing. And so now there is going to be a second monitor coming in here. Um, the mount wasn't ready yet. They're putting a custom mount in here. So this is going to be a 42 inch, I believe, LG. Now the LG will have four, um, four HDMI inputs so that we'll be able to split it into four different views. So we'll have two KVMs coming in so that we can plug a keyboard and mouse and control some of the computers in the rack. 
and the top two will be going to um, what's it called? Some uh, video outputs on the router, so that can be multi views, whatever you want. So under here we've got some um, the KVMs. Oh yeah, so the the KVM system is the XDIP from Ada. So that's a system there. We've got a couple of uh, HDMI SEO to HDMI's there, as well as um, all the converters and such. So once the monitor's in there, the monitor's here, it just needs to be mounted. Um, so that would be the quad view monitor sitting there. Now um, I'm going to walk back to the audio booth. Now here we are in audio land. So this is a DLive C3500. It is a beautiful console. So right now we're actually running audio through there at the moment. Um, but basic overview of this console. Um, so it's paired up with the DM0 brain. So it's 128 channels input, 64 flexible channel outputs. Um, so you can actually go through and say, I want, you know, 10 groups. Um, how many effects buses? How many oxes? How many matrices? How many um, PAFL buses, etc. Um, all very handy. We've got a uh, TC Electronic there for um, audio meters, as well as Genelex. Uh, I think they're 30, 40, 30s or something like that. Um, we've got the same ones in the control room there in the, um, the front. But yeah, so we got a loudness meter here, which is super handy to see. But this is all things audio. We have a computer uh, or KVM setup. Unfortunately, this monitor fell off in transit. Um, so that'll need to be replaced. But um, we have an, a dedicated PC here sitting for audio. So that is going to be, um, means that the, the audio director can change their Dante patches, record multitrack, um, and also get into the DLive software if they so want to as well. Um, but this is the audio booth. We're going to do some bit of treating to the walls. It is, it's a bit funky, the, the audio in here. Um, but, yeah, oh, the other thing too is that the, uh, there is I.O. on the console. So we have patched that in. Sorry, I know you can't see that, but there's patch going into the um, back of the, uh, the rack so that we can actually use that I.O. down the track. Now, apologies for the mess back here. Again, still... Um, but this is basically all things storage, as well as like comms headsets, the actual comms themselves. Let's get some light down here. Um, so here are the wireless comms, so we have a whole bunch of them, and the antennas, so they can be deployed wherever they um, are most useful. Now one thing I'm pretty proud of, actually, is this charging setup. Now we're just cleaning it up at the moment, but we've got three of the Gringo 8-bay chargers. And these... Um, run on 12 volt in, and they have all the um, batteries running on them. Now, what I've done is each of them actually have one of these power shield um, little DC UPSs. So basically it takes in whatever voltage you're outputting, so say 12 volts for this example, and then we can go out of that into the UPS. So, scenario, you're at the end of a gig, and you've just packed up your comms, you're pulling the power from the trailer, and you're about to drive away. You pull the power, all of these stay on. So this means that when you get to the next location, all your batteries are full, ready for your next gig. Because we've all been in a gig where you rock up to the next one, all your comms are dead, and you have to wait for everything to charge before you get there. But at least then you have twice as many batteries as you need for the actual wireless comms, ready to go, fully charged. And yeah, I was pretty proud of that. So and I've tested them, those batteries will charge all of them before they die. And yeah, so that was a very handy thing. Of course, we've got the Red Bull fridge because, well, it's not Red Bull, but it's full of Red Bull typically. Um, yeah, and we've got a whole bunch of um, adapters and bits and pieces in here. Uh, a bunch of Avios, which are super handy. Now, the, what I've done with the Avios is these are all patched into the console. So I've got the... Um, the name on there. So if I deploy one of these, and just go, hey, what, what number is it? Uh, it'll show up in Dante already patched into the console and it'll show up as a, so if I go to, so Avio USB and like they're all labeled there, ready to go. So that is um, how that's working. Let me jump back to the chat, see how everyone's doing, see if anything's been said. All right, what do we got? 
G'day Rob, welcome, welcome. Um, now let me ch jump back to the front, Whoop. that's not the right one, camera one. Um, TBJ, so the trailer itself seems like an odd choice. Did the client choose the trailer for a particular reason? Uh, look, I agree. Um, it is a bit of an odd choice, but the it, it, that was entirely the client's um, choice. I had no say in the build of the trailer. I helped out when it came to like a little bit of positioning and that kind of thing, but essentially that was all the uh, client's choice there. Practically, it's not practical, <laughs> especially the curved roof and things like that. Um, you'll see once you get to the racks, it does get a bit um, does get a bit messy when you're trying to um, what's it called? Uh, fit square things into a round hole, basically. Um, but for a lot of the stuff that the client does, things to get um, what, what am I trying to say? It does have the wow factor in terms of rocking up. It's not just a box trailer. It does look cool. Anyone who knows better will know that it's not exactly practical, but it does look cool. So we have a lot of the clients that um, the client works for is people like Red Bull, things like that, and they love this kind of thing. So rocking up in this for a Red Bull gig looks awesome. So yeah, not very practical, but it does look the part. Um, and we've had to do a lot of work to make this work. Um, this was a Chinese Airstream knockoff, so it was built in China, shipped here. A lot of modifications had to be made to make it road legal here, um, including like replacing axles, replacing brakes, replacing the tow points, replacing the tow thing at the front. Pretty much everything on the bottom has been replaced, uh, apart from the tires, I think. Um, but that is a, yeah, it, it's been a bit, bit of fun. Uh, Eric. Uh, are you distributing Stream Deck patches on each desk location as well? I know you're interested in having a Stream Deck gateway capability at one point. Um, yes, essentially. So what I've got is I've got a, a little mini PC, which I'm running Linux on, um, which is running Companion. I need to fix that today because there's a bit, of, bit of it funky going on. But as you can see over here, I've got... Can you see over there? Yep, I've got a, um, a Stream Deck there. So using a USB extension coming from that PC and the plan is for it to go to, um, yeah, each position so that you can sit there. So there's one of the TDs, uh, the technical directors, um, or the broadcast engineers desk over there, one over here. Um, so I never actually got to doing a long distance USB system. I couldn't find one that was reliable and actually worked. Um, I do want to do some testing further on and figure out that system, but I'm just using long USB extension cables at the moment. So that's how that's working. I've got USB here, USB at the tech position. So those are the main things we need. Um, but yes, still need to do some testing to find out what's actually going to be bulletproof. So that's the main thing. Um, is there a legal process or challenges to make uh, an OB van from Dave Strucken? That is a great question. Now, in terms of legalities, um, so when we took it to the mechanic to uh, sign off for the first time, there's a big distinction between a caravan and a trailer. A caravan is something that someone lives in, and if they, like, sorry, sleeps in or lives in. So the, the, um, the requirements for a caravan are a lot higher because obviously someone might be sleeping in here, if something catches fire, not, not good. So this is definitely deemed a trailer. There's no beds, this is no one's sleeping in here. This is, this is just a trailer. So the legalities for that are a lot lower. Um, you have to stay within the weight of the max weight from the manufacturer. Um, there's a few bits and pieces like that, but essentially this is, um, yeah, this is a box trailer. We have been cleared for this. Electricians come through and done the electrical work in here. Um, that's been signed off as well, but as far as I know, um, ultimately that, that's up to the client to, to sort all that out. Um, but I believe, yeah, it's just basically a trailer. As long as the electrical work is up to the standard of your country um, and it is deemed a trailer, so you don't have to worry about all that um, extra stuff that is needed for a caravan, that's basically it. Uh, what is the weight of the whole trailer? 
So when we first got it, we had the tables all in, the walls in, the racks in, but no equipment. So we took it to a weigh station and it was 3.14 tons. Metric tons, I'm guessing. So I'm not sure what that is in Imperial. Um, so we like to call it pi, 3.14 pi. Yeah, that was a bit fun. Um, so it hasn't been weighed since then. Uh, I believe the, the client's going to get that weighed, um, but we can go up to 4.2. So we had a ton to play with in terms of fitting out with equipment. So I think we're, I think we're still below that, um, but that's where we're at at the moment. I think we're up to date on the chat, but let's get to the fun part, which is actually the um, uh, the racks where all the magic happens. So let's uh, head over there. Still good, we're still live, loving that. Let's head over to Techland. Hey, the uh, sun's coming up, that's nice. Uh, it was pitch black for a very long time, so. All right, so here we are in Techland. Now we've obviously got three racks sitting here. Um, so the idea is three positions for uh, crew, so CCU1, CCU2, and uh, broadcast engineer TD, depending on what country you are in. Um, I might as well run through each rack top to bottom because there's a lot of stuff in here, so let's walk through it all. At the top, we've got a um, Motorola or a um, Redel Ryface, I believe it's called. So it's got two um, radios in here. So this can act as a half duplex radio system. Uh, now, we haven't got antennas for it, so we haven't fired it up yet, but the idea being that is this is connected to a... Gringo 4Y interface down here. So the idea being that you can have a bunch of radios on set deployed and they will be connected to the comms in half duplex mode. So they will always be able to hear and also be able to reply at any point. So I believe it's ones on TX, ones on RX, and they're all listening at the same time. So we've got XLR going into that so that that's all good. So I haven't tested it yet, but this is gonna be a very handy um, addition to be able to actually, you know, fire up the comms and especially when you get there on site, throw some radios around and they can talk to the tech or whatever um, and figure out patching and such. Uh, let's get out of this extra wide and go into this camera. All right, so the next thing is the Isochrone Trinity from Antelope. Now this is a master clock. This will do um, clocks for audio and video. Now, it's actually a really, really powerful clock. It's quite overkill for what is needed for this system, but what it gives me is a whole bunch of different things. So from left to right, we have the source, and this is the most important thing. Now, right now we're using Oven, which is the built-in clock on this, but if we go to a venue, um, which a lot of venues will go, hey, I want to be the master clock, um, I go, great, no worries, uh, what can you give me? So they can give me, say, a word clock, from their audio console, they can give me AS, they can give me a video reference. So I can reference off the venue to make sure that everything in here is clocked together. Um, so use case, yeah, we rock up, I get word clock from front of house on their Digico, whatever they're using at the day. And now everything in the trailer is now referenced off that. So that includes the vision switcher, that includes the router, that includes the DLive obviously. Um, so that means that all of our timings are together, which is awesome. Um, now, the other thing too is it gives you different frame rates. So if you are doing different things for whatever reason, so right now I'm in 30 frames or with a drop frame as well, um, but you can go with through and change your frame rate depending on what your gig is happening, or you have multiple frame rates. If you have 24 going 60, whatever. Uh, as well as different audio things. So this console, audio console is a 96K, um, so that's running that. And the other thing too is that if for some reason um, someone pulls your word clock from the venue, you won't drop audio. This will keep going from where it is. Now, if it comes back online again, you will get a bit of a, a blip in the audio and video, but the great thing is that if someone jumps on a cable, the show won't stop this will just keep on going where it was. So super handy little piece of equipment there. Um, next down, we have a Ternex Express. So this is a very handy standards converter as well as like test pattern generator and things like that. Um, yeah, so we just got one of these just for 
you know, there are going to be times where you need it, so just super handy to have. Now, each of these screens are the um, 4K uh, Blackmagic monitors. So we have three of them sitting here. Um, just going to check the auxiliary. And we should be seeing a picture on this screen. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Anyway, um, so the idea is over your aux going to this screen. Um, and your CCU ops can then bounce between each thing. Now, this is a little bit of a secret source I've got here. Now, what you're seeing here is cameras one, two, three, and four. Now, how I'm getting this is this is actually a part of a, uh, a 4K multi-view. So multi-view four from the switcher, I'm chopping into four parts. So this is the top left part of it, and over here is the top right. So I'm actually getting seven multi-views out of the constellation, even though I only have four. Um, now the way I'm doing that, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but down here, I've got a uh, SDI to quad, uh, 12 GSDI SDI to quad SDI. So what that can do is get your 4K feed and chop it into four parts. Um, and that is how I'm getting these things. So these are full 1080 multi-views um, from the 4K ones. And we even have a t another two 1080s available for whatever else you need. So really handy little thing. So that gives the operator uh, tallies as well. So they can see the green tally, uh, red tally if they're on, as well as down here as well. But it means that they can see all their cameras as well as jump into the camera wherever needed. So really, really cool there. Now we've got obviously the panels, CCU panels here. Um, very handy little bits of kit. And we also have a green go belt pack um, per operator, which they can throw their um, headsets on. Oh, I've also got Unify access points, uh, one in the trailer here and two on the, um, one on each stage box as well. So just a basic control network so that they can um, get that going. Uh, let's move over here to the next rack. Um, we have the LU610 4KM. So this is the Live View box. Very powerful box, 4K encoder. I think it's got six um, 4G, maybe 5G, um, antennas, uh, SIM cards in there so that you can uh, bond to a Live View server on the other end. Uh, we have six uh, HyperDeck. HD Studio Pluses, I think they're called, as well as one of the old 4K SSD ones as well. And that is all things video. So everything's 4K capable. Um, what I love about these is that they're 4K, but they also have FTP. So at the end of the day, you can just pull things off without actually having to take out um, SD cards. And we have a NAS at the bottom, which has got a 10 gig card in there. So all things equal, we should better get all of these coming out full speed going to the NAS, which is really, really cool at full gigabit speed as well. Again, we have our CCU here. Go down below. Now this is uh, kind of computer land. So there will be four Mac minis. So we've got a tech with a 10 gig card in there, uh, director and DA. Again, they're all just Mac minis. They go to KBM so they can do whatever is needed. There's another 10 gig one going in here. Uh, once that arrives. Um, audio control computer, so it's a PC NUC um, with two uh, NICs in there. One for um, control VLAN, one for Dante VLAN, and one for, and another one computer here for Companion. That's running Linux, not Windows, because I've had a lot of problems with Companion on Windows, but uh, Linux, I've had much success. Uh, going down to, this is a graphics computer, so this is what I'm running the graphics on at the moment. Just using OBS to be able to do that. Um, so it's got a 4K um, deck link card in there, or the 8K one, sorry. And that is that. Oh, so of course, we've got the uh, Synology NAS. There's the number there, RS820 Plus. So that is the NAS, it's got, um, a 10 gig card in there as well as two M.2 SSDs for quick caching and then four eight terabyte drives in the front I think so it gives you 20 terabytes of usable storage as well as um, quick caching as well which is very handy oh I see some things in the chat let's go see how we're 
How we doing? Um, how loud is the trailer when the first turned on? Um, look, to be honest, the loudest thing is actually the air cons. So the air cons in here are caravan air cons and they are really, really loud. So client is planning on changing that um, down the track to have some sort of ducted system and a split system so that you can actually hear things in here. It's just really, really loud. Now, right now, where we are, there's a, um, enjoy hearing bird, Aussie birds in the background. Um, you must be uh, feeling a little bit uh, homesick there, David. Um, where we are right now, there's a air compressor, uh, there's a um, compressor for the aircon for the venue right there. So unfortunately, they get a bit loud when we get outside. Um, but yeah, the loudest thing is actually the aircons. It's not the rack, which is crazy. There's a lot of loud things in there, but yeah, the loudest thing is the, the rack. Uh, for firmware updates for equipment, how often are updates going to be done to the equipment and what's the maximum cameras you can use during a gig? Um, so ultimately, it's up to the client. So once this is delivered, this will be up to the client for um, managing firmware. I've updated everything today to make sure that everything's up to speed now. Um, but that's up to the client to go through and um, get those um, firmware updated wherever necessary. So. And the maximum cameras, look, it's 40 input switches, so in theory you can have 40. There are CCU positions for four and four cameras, but each CCU can also do eight pretty easily with a shift button. Um, so you can do eight and eight, so you can do 16. Um, now in terms of stage boxes, we'll move to them later on, but we've got up to um, five inputs on each stage box, including camera power and such, but I'll show you that a little bit later on. Um, so basically 15 cameras is kind of the, the reasonable um, limit here. But again, 40 input switcher, so that's what's going to come up there. Uh, do you provide written documentation for the systems you install, wiring diagrams and etc.? Yes. So that is happening pretty much as we speak. So one of my team is uh, currently working on the documentation for this trailer. Um, now. With any build that I do, I always start with everything on a spreadsheet. So I had a Google Doc, which was fully populated, full of um, everything, really. Uh, so I didn't make a single cable until it was in the document. So I planned everything out. I planned the rack layouts, the cable positions, all that kind of stuff. Um, and which meant that when I was making the cable, I just look at the doc and go, cool. Sorry, the, the spreadsheet and go, great. I need to go from here to here and the cable's called X. So then I'd pull the cable in and then throw the label on there. So um, that's a huge thing is I, before I made any cable, and if I was making things on the fly, I'd still throw them in the document as well. So the last thing you want to do is find out that uh, I need to have, um, what's it called? I need, um, need to find out where this cable went or where this cable's going. Um, so yes, everything's in documents. documents um, now we're gonna provide the client with all the documents. We're just cleaning it up at the moment because obviously the spreadsheet got a little bit messy, but we are gonna clean that up and give it to the client so they have all the docs ready so that any tech can kind of um, jump in here and know where everything goes and where all the things are, where all the IP addresses are, IP ranges, all that kind of stuff. So everything's on paper, which is awesome. Yes, yeah, been far too long since I've been able to get back to Oz. We would uh, gladly have you back. Uh, let me know if you uh, pop by. We'll, uh, we should catch up. Um, are you in a position to offer OBVAN installation services to countries outside the US? Look, it is a plausibility. Um, now, I did have a request from someone in Canada to do a fit out over there. Um, where things get where things get interesting is I I don't ever want to do a job where I provide the um, the plans and then get someone else to do it because that can get very messy in terms of they will get the plans and go, hey, I'm just going to do things by the book here. And if they see a mistake or an error somewhere, they would just do it anyway just by the documentation. So I always want to make sure that I'm doing a significant portion of you know being there along the projects and things like that. So yes, it is doable. Um, now we make a bit of profit, so we sell all the equipment that we bought here. So we sell the Gringo, Blackmagic, D-Lab, all that kind of stuff. So we made a bit of profit on the equipment there. Now I'd be charging a little bit more 
um, for something international because obviously, you know, there's flights. Uh, I'm not making any money on the equipment because I can only sell to Australia. Um, because having to sell to overseas warranties and things get difficult. Now, potentially, I could look at building something here and shipping it overseas, but then again, warranties and stuff get messy. So, but hey, if you if you are interested in something, let me know. I'll be happy to have a chat about it. Um, check me out at uh, tgav.au and um, send me an email. But um, yeah, I think we should uh, get back to the rack because uh, we've still got the, the big stuff going. And of course, all the... Um, uh, the patching at the back. That's where all the magic happens. So let's go back to the rack. Oh, sorry for the ducking. It's actually a very low ceiling there, especially with the curved roof. So right now the camera's at eye height for me, so I'm going to have to duck down and not hit the speaker as well. So uh, there's, yeah, there's been a long tally of people getting their head hit on that. Um, now, Two video hubs. I would have loved, and Blackmagic, if you're watching this, please make it 80 by 80 and a 120 by 120 of the same thing. Just please, we really need it. Um, the, I, I just needed more than 40. So how I've set this out is I'll go to, um, oh, so this is the, um, the adder system. So I can go through and grab any PC that I want and now I am in the control PC. So I go to the video hub control here. Now we have, I basically split up the video hub into two different places. I've got the inboard video hub and the outboard video hub. So the inboard is basically everything inside the trailer, all the screens, um, all the destinations here, apart from the recorders, because it's kind of like an outboard thing. So, um, so I'll jump here into the inboard, for example. Um, so all the control monitors, all the multi-views, the CCU monitors, uh, the hyperdeck inputs. I oh, know, sorry, that is on this one. Uh, the multi-view inputs, Teranex inputs. And there is um, eight channels worth of cross-link between the first router and the second router. Now, in terms of inputs, each of the routers have 12 oxes from the um, constellation each. So you have the X, so um, yeah, so oxes 1 to 12 go to the first one, and oxes 13 to 24 go to the second one. Um, but all the multi views go to the first one because that's what's being um, distributed around the trailer here. Now, if we move to the second video hub, the outboard one. Uh, we have those oxes there. We have the outputs from the hyperdeck. And then we have a whole bunch of um, inputs to the router here on the patch bay. And we also have the cross connection from router one. So if we need to send multi-view to this router, for example, we have that cross connection there. Just the unfortunate thing about having one router, oh sorry, two routers is that um, that was necessary. So now at the bottom, we have um, the stage boxes. So I'll go to them soon. Um, but we have five um, outputs on each stage box. The first one going to a DA and the rest of them being a single output. Um, so basically it means that someone can say, hey, I'm at stage box B. I would love to have something on um, that port. And I go, great. So B4, then I can change the, the routing there. Um, then we also have a whole bunch of outputs to physical patches on the um, back there. Now, there is no inputs from the constellation in the router. Reason being, well, it's a 40 input switcher and it's a 40 output router, so there's literally nothing you can do. You can double patch or something. So all of the inputs for the, uh, the switcher go to the uh, patch bay, and that is how that is done. I've uh, got the audio bridge here as well, just so we can, um, as goes through the router as well, the tech can listen to things, uh, but also listen to different channels, because we've got some audio embedders going on too for different things. Now, Gringo, down the bottom here, we have a four-wire interface. So two of the lines are going to um, the four-wire radios. Uh, and we also have two going to the intercom on the uh, Blackmagic. 
Now, most of the time they're going to be using the uh, Ringo intercom, but it means that we can throw some headphones into the cameras and get comms for a camera in the middle of nowhere if that is so needed. So it won't be used much, but it is handy for if it does need to be used. Um, and yeah, we've got our um, power box here. Ah, so this is the fun one. So we've got a multi-view here with a lot on there. Now on the bottom here, we have a multi-view 4 for the keen eyed out there. So what I've done is I can basically put multiple multi-views and everything in here. So the idea being that the tech can sit down and kind of see everything. Put whatever you want on these monitors. I mean, these multi-views have been used elsewhere, but um, you can kind of lay this out how you like, but it's just nice to be able to walk in here and go, cool, I can see camera 15's come up, I can see camera one, I can see my output's done the right thing, and just having a program there just to know what's going out in that situation. So that is a very handy um, addition there. Um, now, the other thing down here is an SDI to HDMI 12G, which is doing, which is not doing that. The only reason I have that is for a little feature in it for time code out. So that'll actually get the time code from the SDI feed and spit it out as LTC audio on the back. That's literally its one job, uh, is to spit out time code. Now, the constellation can't accept time code, which pains me. I really wish it could because, it, yeah, it just should. Um, but at least we can get the time code out of it. So that goes to the console um, so that when you're recording or whatever, you've got LTC and we can send it around wherever needed. We've got five UPSs here. Now this whole trailer will run a, a decent amount of time, it seems. Uh, maybe about 20 minutes or so before things start to die. I've kind of split things up into like main, like all the main stuff and backup, uh, video, like the switcher and router, audio, console and networking. Um, but yeah, so that is the UPSs running the whole system. Um, so that is basically all the front here. Um, checking out the chat. Um, doesn't Blackmagic make a 72x72 72 72 larger router? Yes, they do, but it's not 4K. So that is the unfortunate thing about that is that it's only 3G. So um, I'm really hoping they make a 4K version soon because that would be exceptionally handy. Um, but now that it's daytime outside, I can actually show you the outside of this thing. Hello. Um, now I'm really hoping that this Wi-Fi sticks to Sticks there, so I can still see myself, which is good. So here is the trailer. Um, color temperature is, let's go to auto. How about that? All right, so this is the trailer. So we've got a bit of awning going on. I had some rain this morning, so I had to just try and uh, stop rain from getting in. But it is pretty cool. Look, we've got lights everywhere. Lead strip, which is kind of just more fun than anything else. Uh, triple axle system, two doors front and back as well as the the um, uh, the little access way in there. Uh, three air cons in the roof. Storage box here so we can put things like um, cable rolls. Apologies for the noise. We've got the um, air con compressor sitting there so I'll try and raise my voice. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, and here is the back. So this is a really cool feature is we actually have this splits out so you have a, a platform here you can stand on to be able to get to the rack but also you have the top lid which you can um, pull up and down um, now the way I've set this out is that once this is closed you can just pop the lid and still get to all your patches um, in the back here which is really really cool um, now we did have a bit of problems with cooling which is why we've got here there's uh, the hyperdex and the the routers the both of the um, exhaust are going into one spot. So uh, there was basically a hot spot of hot air sitting right there. Um, so we're just trying to suck that out and exhaust it out the back. Um, but we had the aircon blasting in there to try and keep things cool. But I'll go in here and show you what we've got. So huge patch bay here. Uh, now all of the patches in the trailer, so they're going to here. Now basically the, um, the numbering system here is in numbers. So V for video, the first number is zero or two. So the, two, uh, the first number is the location. 
um, and then the number of the cable as well. So it's the same system all around for audio and video. Um, we've got a graphics machine which is going into the switcher. Now all of the switcher inputs are down here. Uh, in, once 20, 21 to 40, and there's a bunch of router inputs as well as router outputs as well. So kind of outs into ins, wherever um, that happens. Now these are all the stage boxes. So each of the stage boxes, which are sitting over there, um, have five inputs each. And they go, typically just go straight into here, but you can patch them however you like. Um, so that's basically all things um, patching there. Uh, and the patching for the constellation, all nice, neat, everything's labeled just as we like it. Um, patching for comms. So this is the fiber breakout. So each of the, um, there's a multi-fiber for each stage box and that gets broken out into a whole bunch of our LC fibers which go to 5, 10, 15 um, breakouts here. So they all go up to the router or go to the patch bay. Um, and that fiber goes down to the patch box, which we'll go to later. Uh, router, we're going to clean this all up. Uh, sorry, not router. Um, the UPS is sitting here. And that is that rack. Um, now we go up to the next one. We've got a pep link. So this is for internet in. This is also manages all the internet um, uh, routing to the switch. Uh, so basically means that we can put 4G in here, a bunch of WAN inputs, whatever. And this is also the input for the live view here, so we can get internet straight into there. Um, all the patching for the Hyperdex. Ah, now here's a fun little trick. Um, now on the Hyperdex, you've actually got monitor out, which is actually more useful than you think. So if you're running 4K on these, for example, these monitor routes are only 3G. So you actually have a free down converter in SDI when using these monitor routes. You can set it to a clean output, and yeah, so for example, if you want to do a 4K on this and then output into here for 1080, have a 4K and a 1080 record without having to use a down converter. Super, super handy. Um, we've got all the Ethernet patch bay. Uh, now basically all the permanent patches kind of happen here and they go to the core switch. The core switch does all the DHCP reservations for everything. Um, don't know why the white balance keeps going so cool, but anyway. Um, and this is the backup switch above here as well. So just got that configured, so we'll need to put Dante backup going into there. Uh, a bunch of the KVM sitting here, uh, as well as the computer and the uh, NAS down here. Um, we've got the outputs for the, um, the ride face, uh, the work clock sitting here, a bunch of SDI to HDMI converters, and as well as HDMI to SDI and also a bunch of audio embedders. So these guys um, have, are using AES to a DX012. So we have eight channels on each of those audio embedders so that you can have multi-tracks wherever you want. Um, and it all goes through the router so you can patch it in how you like. Uh, a bunch of analog ties everywhere. Um, analog IO here for the console. Um, here is the DM0 brain, which has Dante card and Maddie card. Now the MADI is coming from the Constellation and you get the first 30 inputs MADI D embed, which is so, so, so handy. Um, so it means you don't have to run audio and video to each thing, you just run HDMI, SDI, whatever it is, and you will get audio and video already patched in. So I've already patched it into the console, so that means the video tech can go, hey, input 12, I have uh, a, a video playback device, can you make that appear? and that's already in the console patch. So super handy. Uh, here is the tailboard for um, all things patches. We've got our multi-fibers sitting here and a bunch of patches going to the patch bay. Uh, now we're three phase in. We have lighted up so we can run it on a single 240, just. Um, takes a bit of an Apollo 13 kind of startup to get this thing going, but this is basically for, um, you know, just checking things and getting things up and running. Uh, you can't run any aircons, obviously, because we're out of power, but this just runs everything on one 240 volt outlet, which is, a uh, yeah, just. <laughs> um, so that is that. I will go to the stage boxes next, but I want to check the chat and make sure everyone's still there. Hope you're enjoying this so far. Hope you're enjoying your day. Um, 
now. Okay, we're back. Uh, Sportflow saying I would have gone with a um, broadcast specific on audio console like a um, Carlec or Lolo. Look, it's it's an interesting one. So yes, they are very very powerful consoles, but what the DLive gets you for its price is actually really really impressive. You've got all that I/O, all the different types of I/O. Um, the surfaces are IP based, so you can actually just grab that surface, put it on stage, plug it into um, a what's it called uh, network port, and you can mix that way, or you can actually have someone remotely mixing and just VPNing in and things like that. It's a lot of cool things you can do. You can actually have multiple surfaces on the one console. A lot of really cool stuff. So yes, like the lowers and stuff are great consoles, but for the price that we get for D Live, it's really hard to. Um, recommend anything else at the moment because um, it's basically I think 15 grand for the Surface and um, the console each or something like it's pretty cheap I think that's US-ish it's obviously a lot more here in Australia um, but yeah I just want to drop by to see if anyone's going but we'll go to the stage boxes now this is where the the fun happens. So, but yeah, if you've got any questions for anything you've seen so far, please uh, ch throw them in the chat. But uh, we'll head to the stage boxes now. Heading back out. All right, so here are the stage boxes. So I've got three different stage boxes and all have different capabilities, kind of. So this is A, this is the main one. Now this has uh, primary redundant network switches or 10 gig backbone to the, the core switches on the inside. Um, now each of the stage boxes have the same IO in terms of video. So you got five inputs, you got a program DA in there going to five outputs, uh, as well as another four outputs here. And you got 20 volt outputs for, to run the Ursus. So you can go uh, one, two, three. This wasn't working for some reason, I have to check that. Um, one, two, three for each camera. And we made these looms so that you have a single loom going to each camera with power, video, and video return. So really, really handy for, for that situation. Now we had a problem with the GT168 here. Um, it's just been uh, looked at at the moment by um, Alan Heath. So hopefully he'll be back today. Um, but yeah, there is an analog I.O. sitting here going to the RX receivers there. Um, now, and we've also got UPSs on each stage box too. Um, so on the back here, we've got exhaust fan, because it's super handy. Uh, Unify access points, as well as eight channels of RX and two channels of TX, stereo TX. Um, so basically this gives us um, labs, whatever we need. Now we actually get full integration with the uh, DLive. So if you look at, if you select your channel, like RX1 for example on your console, it'll actually show up and show you, the, you can adjust the gain of the unit on the console, you can check the battery level from the audio desk, which is really, really cool. Um, and yeah, the back of the other one just has fans and access point. No access point in this one, um, but yeah, just kept things simple there. Now the second one just has UPS and primary backup um, network. Um, so you have full access to your, um, all your VLANs here, a bunch of AV control. There's also gonna be KVN there, Dante, a um, bunch of trunks and bits and pieces. And of course, all your IO for each of the stage boxes. So really, really cool. Now the fibers we're using are um, MTP connections. So that has 12 cores per fiber. And we're using these uh, military grade um, armored fibers with like waterproof connectors. So we've got uh, three 30 meters, 300 meters, and also three 300 meter ones as well as joiner boxes so that you can join them together wherever needed. So it's all single mode. Um, but yeah, so basically from there, fiber to the uh, thing, everything just populates ready to go on that end. But that is basically it. That's all the, um, the bits. 
I'll uh, head back inside again. But yeah, if you have any questions, please start throwing them in the chat. Um, that is the whole system functioning. It has been an absolute um, adventure, let's put it that way, for this whole project. Um, but I've, I've had a lot of fun with it, I'm not going to lie. It's, um, I've learned a lot. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be a lot of fun on different gigs. We're going to have a lot of capability for what the, what the client needs, which is really, really cool. Actually, out of curiosity, how's my sync looking as well? I haven't actually done any sync tests on um, this setup here. Um, Jez is saying, is there any remote ability, if there's a major issue, are you able to go on a laptop and troubleshoot remotely? Um, we can probably look at putting in like a team viewer or something on the, on the computer. Um, because basically the tech computer in there has full access to every device, essentially. So you have, um, yeah, a KVM will, sorry, no KVM. Yeah, you'll be able to do that. Um, down the track, we might look at getting a um, uh, Gringo Bridge X, which will link up comms to the web. So that means you can have four people remotely connected to the comms with the full 32 channels of um, com, so they can actually grab a panel and then remote into here, or they can use a phone, so that's actually really, really cool. Um, the audio can be done remotely as well. I've seen that done a bunch with the DLives now, of like even internationally. A, um, an audio operator in Sydney, for example, has been mixing something in New, New Zealand. Um, so they're just getting a high quality um, PAFL bus back so they can you know, solo things and hear what they're doing but they're just remote controlling the console in the other country. Um, so yeah, if we need to have someone uh, mix remotely, super easy from there. Um, yeah, and we've got, um, but yeah, it's kind of like a bit of a Swiss Army knife, this thing. Um, there's a lot of expandability in terms of IO, so you can set things up however you like. Um, yeah, it's a pretty capable system. Uh, I've tried to, yeah, I've tried to leave plenty of space just in case we um, need to make some adjustments. But yeah, if you've got any questions, throw them in the chat. I'm uh, keen to hear. Now, what have I learnt in this process? <laughs> it's been a, um, it's been a fun one. I think definitely uh, locking down the, um, the time needed. Uh, luckily, I got a lot of this gear just before the, the. Um, uh, things got crazy with COVID and uh, parts shortage and things like that. So managed to get most of the things fairly quickly. Um, for the video route, I was planning on the Arja 64 by 64, but they just never released it as far as I can tell. Um, Cause yeah, I'm a, I'm a distribu uh, dealer of it and the distributor's like, I just can't get you one, I'm sorry. So ended up with the, the two 40 by 40s there. Now in another video, I was talking about the um, the multi-view here. We were hoping to get four. The drawings that we got were actually wrong. So we were hoping to put a 27 inch here, um, but that just never fit. So this is why we got the three monitors here. What I was really hoping for was a 65 inch 8K monitor. So I got a, a loaner from Blackmagic because they couldn't actually tell me if it worked or not of the 8K SDI to display port because it had Hang on, is it display port? Yes, because in theory, you can just can change from display port to um, HDMI 2.1, I think. Is it 2.1 or 2.0? Um, but I just could not get it working. So I actually went to the local um, video store, walked in with uh, four hyperdecks, a master clock, and the device and said, hey, uh, can I basically, if I can get 8K to work on your screen, I'm going to walk away with one of those. And they uh, let me wire it all up, plug it all in, but I just couldn't get 8K working. It was coming up at 4K. I had 8K coming out, like it was all sewing out fine in the box, but I just could not get 8K working. So Blackmagic, please release an actual useful 8K converter because as far as I can tell, the 8K one you've got, there is no TVs you can buy in the last couple of years that actually make it work. 
But uh, yeah, that was my original plan. It was an 8K monitor here, so one big panel, and then all the 4K feeds going into that. So it's just one nice big thing, but really, really um, handy. Uh, Jonathan's saying, what graphic engine are you running in the truck? Now, the there isn't one per se. Um, the client's looking at a few different options for a permanent one. Like we have that PC there with the Declan card, so that can uh, load any software on there. Um, but something can be hired. Uh, they are looking at potentially an EBS Go system uh, for replay. Um, but everything everything can be hired as well. So we can. There's a bu bunch of space in the rack intentionally left there to be able to throw in some EBSs or recorders. And yeah, so that's all they're ready for that. Um, but there is no specific one yet. We've been looking at a bit of different software, but yeah, it will all depend on the job basically. Uh, spotted some live view decoders, the new ones, cool. Uh, it's actually encoder. So the um, 610M is the, the 4K encoder there, um, which is, I haven't actually fired, like I've turned it on, but I haven't actually used it yet. So I'm actually really curious to, to um, to try it out. So we've got a uh, instance in AWS running the decoder software so that we can send it up to the cloud, mix it out and send it out to wherever we need. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just using my Pell Nano to do that. Um, but yeah, it's been a really fun process. Um, again, if any more questions, throw them in the chat. But um, yeah, it's it's been an adventure. That's for sure. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I can talk through here. Um, I think that's most of it, actually. Um, did you consider uh, going completely IP 2110? Seems like this would be the trend in OB trucks lately. You are correct. There's definitely a trend going on, but... It's... For, I mean, the vision switch, were, like the constellation is SDI only. Um, all the cameras are SDI only. You would basically have to go into Sempty and then back out again. And then it just seems like a lot of conversion for what we, what, is, what would be required to make it work. Now, again, this is all based on 6G SDI. Everything's rated for that. But I feel like if we had a different switcher, a different routing system, um, we could potentially look into that. But for the costs, uh, this was just a lot cheaper way of doing it. Because um, you got basically 25K for the, sorry, not 25K. Um, Constellation is kind of like 8K US or whatever it is. Um, the routers are another 8K. Like to get anything 70 2110 for this amount of IO would get a lot more expensive. Um, so obviously everything here was you know done on a budget. We, I had to chop down a lot. I think my build budget was 350k Australian, so that's what 250 ish US, 200 US or so. Um, that's for the the fit out and the equipment for all things technical. Um, the the vehicle obviously is separate. That was bought by the client, um, but yeah, had to keep everything in mind for. Um, uh, budgets because it wasn't infinite by any means. But I feel like for what we get in this trailer, I think I've done an okay job in terms of fitting it out with um, efficient stuff. Um, <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is how Skynet starts. What if I told you it already had? Um, yeah, look, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it's been great to be back live again. So I've got a bunch of recording I want to do. I apologize. I haven't been recording lately. It has been a bit of a time. I've got a baby due in uh, 20 days from now, which is really exciting. Um, but I am going to try and get some more content. So I'm going to film the uh, video for this, make it all look pretty and get some nice um, montages. I'm also got a job tomorrow where... Um, Actually, I've got my new vision rack, which I, you may have seen in like Discord and things like that. Uh, so I, I've almost finished that. So I want to do a video on the new vision rack. So my last um, live stream studio in a box with the ATEM Mini is now gone. It is completely gone. Now working on just the... Uh, now I've got a Constellation 8K myself now. 
X32 rack um, and a bunch of different things. So I got a 4K capable rack myself. Um, yeah, so that's been uh, a lot of fun to build. So I've already used it on a couple of gigs so far. Using it on a gig tomorrow and we have a bit of time to play with things. So um, yeah, so that's been really cool. So I'll do a video on that as well. I'm also doing a review of the Middle Things um, APCR adapter as well as the Middle Things controller. So I've been playing with that. So I've got a review incoming for that one as well, which is really, really cool. Um, looks awesome for the budget though. Thank you, I, uh, I think so as well. It's pretty cool. Now, good, good question, Jonathan. So how far can you run the camera looms from the stage box at 20 volts before you get voltage drop? So I picked 20 volts because that is the max voltage for the cameras. So it goes between eight and 20, I think, something like that. Um, Cause obviously yeah, over DC, long distance, you are gonna get a voltage drop. So I think it's 12 AWG cable that we're using for the DC cable. And we've done it to 50 meters. So I think that's 150 feet, I think. My calculations are correct. Um, so basically, yeah. We've done 15 meter looms or up to 50 meter looms um, for that because also the uh, 6G connection will start to degrade a little bit by the time you get to the end of that distance. So yeah, up to 50 meters is what I've kind of expected to. Um, so it goes from really chunky uh, DC cable to make that work. Um, but yeah, that's been super handy. I was on a job yesterday, maybe the day before. And yeah, use the looms, run it out. We don't have to try and find power boards for cameras or batteries or anything. It's just single run, plug it all in and it just appears. So really, really cool. Um, but look, if you guys haven't got any other questions, I think, I think that's about it. I've uh, really enjoyed being live again. Thank you for everyone for joining because it's been, uh, yeah, it's been fun having you all here. I want to do more live streams. I know I promise, I'm sorry, it's been busy. It's been all happening. But um, yes, if you are looking to build anything or you're looking for some advice on how to do so, please get in contact with me. Um, check us out at tinygiantsav at tgav.au. Love to have a chat and love to see how we can support you in that. Uh, even international, we can make something work as well. So if you like what you see, if you want something similar, maybe not on an Airstream because that's been a bit of a meme, but it's been, it's been fun anyway. So yeah, if you have any uh, any questions or anything, feel free to pop me an email. Um, we'd love to have a chat with you. But um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you all for joining. Um, and hopefully you have some more content coming from me soon. Uh, I'll actually have another video I've recorded for um, how to get an ISO record uh, with the resolve file from an ATEM constellation. So a non-ATEM mini. So that's going to be an interesting one too. So I've actually filmed that. Just getting the sign off from the client whether I can actually show it. Um, but yeah, more videos coming your way. Sorry again for the delays. Love you all. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.